Greetings, viewers. I am Eric the Car Guy, also known as the Space Cowboy. No, actually ETCG1 when I post videos to this channel. And hey, if it's your birthday, happy birthday. Please enjoy the digital cake I got for you. All right, well, today's topic stems from the fact that uh, I drove into the shop today and opened my hood and I looked around the shop and I noticed that a lot of the hoods are up on my vehicles in the shop. And there's a reason for that, and that is heat soak. Um, and with heat soak, what happens is when you're driving along, your engine's running, and especially when you're driving along, not so much when you're sitting still, but driving down the road, there's airflow. There, there's things that are there to remove the heat. In fact, the cooling system, that's exactly what it does. It takes heat from the engine, puts it out to the radiator, which radiates the heat out into the world away from the engine compartment. But what happens when you stop and you park the car and you shut it off and you walk away? Well, there's nothing circulating that that warm air or that heat anymore. So it just sits there and does something that's called heat soak. And this is something that happens not just in automobiles, but in a lot of equipment and stuff like that. But anyway, it's something that engineers care a lot about and they engineer things into their systems. I know Honda's in particular can have the cooling fans run for up to 30 minutes after you shut the ignition off and walk away. And they do this to deal with heat soak and the effects of heat soak. And basically the effects of heat soak that, that I've seen, or at least that I believe I've seen, is something called coking and that is when the oil sits inside those little passages inside the engine and it sits there and it cooks and you get that brown crusty stuff a lot of that comes from from heat and the oil breaking down and that type of thing now like i said engineers spend a lot of time to try to engineer provisions for heat soak into their systems but things like custom vehicles that's a little bit different so what i do when I get to the shop or into an enclosed space where it's secure, I just pop the hood and leave it open. And that means all the heat that's in the engine compartment gets a chance to dissipate and it doesn't soak the engine compartment in the same way it would if the hood was on. And the hood often has some form of insulation underneath it as well, sound deadening material, that type of thing, um, that also helps insulate and keep all that heat inside the engine compartment. Now, once again, Engineers spend a lot of time trying to engineer ways of dealing with heat soak into their systems, particularly when they put it out into the world in automobiles. But me, like I said, if it's possible, I, I'm, I've, I have a tendency to maybe to be too kind to machines. In fact, I don't think I'm a very good race car driver as a result because I have something that uh, my friend T. Mark Jones called mechanical sympathy. <laughs> and that I'm, I'm thinking about the vehicle and I don't want to overstrain it or something like Something in the back of my mind is, is saying, Eric, you're going to have to fix this. Don't break it. Like I said, I, I get to the shop or into my garage at home. It's enclosed. I just pop the hood and I leave it open. Now, <laughs> garage at home in the summertime, I mean, you're taking all that heat and putting it inside your garage, which in essence transfers it into your house. Not saying that the heat is good goes away, but if you're allowing it to dissipate into a larger space, yeah, you're gonna take that heat that's here and put it someplace else. That's really what it's all about, moving around heat. Air conditioning does the same thing, it just moves heat. So we want heat because that produces the power in our engines, but at the same time, heat also causes damaging situations, such as heat soak. So that's why I'm bringing it up in today's video. Um, this is how I deal with heat soak. How do you deal with heat soak? I mean, if you're in an apartment complex or something like that, unless you sit out front with a lawn chair waiting for the thing to cool down, not a very secure thing to do and it's not really necessary i should really say that it's not completely 100 percent necessary but in my mind i'm saying to myself okay i open the hood i'm allowing that heat to dissipate there is less of a chance of heat soak and less chances of the the potential damage that could be caused by heat soak i don't want to inject some kind of paranoia into you that if you're not leaving your hood open after you after you drive someplace that your engine's going to be damaged in some way no that's that's not what i'm saying what I'm saying is I'm on the extreme end <laughs> and I'm very sympathetic to my machines and I, I try to you know, be nice to them whenever possible. And so when I get to the shop, I open the hood and let the heat dissipate rather than sit underneath the hood and cook everything underneath there. That's just what I do. Heat soak, what are your experiences with it? Do you do something similar to what I do? Have you even heard about it? Do you even know about it? Are you some kind of scientist, physicist type of person that, that knows all about this and can, can give us some detailed explanation of the efforts that you go through in order to deal with heat soak in these situations? Love to know about it. If you have automotive questions, I'm gonna ask that you head to ericthecarguy.com. I'll link that down in the description along with additional information you might find interesting in other videos. So check the description for more stuff. Please be sure to like, comment, subscribe, share the video with the world. Appreciate it when you do that. Be safe, have fun, stay dirty. Thank you for watching today and I'll see you next time. Mondays, usually for ETCG1.